Uh, Assalamualaikum. Hi everyone. Okay, so um, for this time, uh, I'm going to explain uh, regarding uh, solving the simultaneous linear equation, okay, for four variables. Okay, so I will share to you the slides related to the topics. Okay, so uh, this is actually the example for four variables. Okay, uh, let's see how we can solve uh, the system of linear equation as shown in these uh, slides using Gauss elimination method. Okay, so look at, at the equations. Okay, so in this system of equations, uh, is all written all equations here are linear okay so we have four variables denoted by p q r s okay so let's see how we can solve these four variables using gauss elimination okay so first step is to transform the simultaneous linear equation into the matrix form Okay, so uh, remember that in the Gauss elimination, we have to apply elementary row operation. Okay, so in this case, uh, they are only uh, ERO uh, apply. Okay, there's only ERO apply. So uh, after this, you will see that there is uh, ERO with special methods. Okay, so that one we call as pivoting. Okay, so the original system of equation we transform to the matrix as shown here. So write down in the matrix form. Huh? So this is the starting matrix. Okay, so including the, the right hand side. In this left hand side is the equation. So we write down everything here for the zero means that this P is zero. Huh? So this first column is the column for P. Second column is the column for the variable Q. Third is for R and this is for S. Okay, so the right hand side of the equation is given here. Okay, so let's look at. So in the original equation, okay, so the first row, it is 1, okay, it is 0, 2, 2. Okay, now in 4, this is a 4 by 4 matrix. Okay, so you have seen example. How we can do ERO for 3 by 3. Okay, so this time you will see uh, the example for 4 by 4. Okay, so for this 4 by 4, we, uh, we with the same purpose. In the Gauss elimination, we must make it uh, the lower part of the original matrix as 0. Okay, so let's look at which one is the lower part. Okay, so this is diagonal entry. Okay, or we call diagonal elements, diagonal. So it means that uh, the lower part uh, of the diagonal must be zero. So man, this, this one must be zero. Okay, here also, this must be zero. Okay, so let's look at, in the second row, this one is zero. So no changes that we need to require. Okay, so but this two and two is not zero. Okay, so we start with that one. Okay, so in the next step, with the objective that this 2 and 2 here, which is in the row number 3 and row number 4, make it 0. Okay, 0. So it means that we want to modify the number in row number 3 and row number 4, 0. Okay, so you we have to find out what is the formulation in the ERO. Okay, so we use row number 1. We cannot use row number 2 because row number 2, that is 0. So, if the elements in that row is 0, so we cannot use that element in the uh, creative formulation. Okay, because it's 0. So, there is no other choice to uh, change these two row in row number 3 and these two in row number 4. We must use row number 1. Okay, so we find out what is the formulation. It must be deducted. Uh, 2R1, okay? So, this is the created formulation. Okay, same goes for row number 4. Okay, so we calculate first row number 3. Calculate row number 3, okay? 
So where we calculate in row number 3, using this formulation, then this one combine. Put it here, put into the formulation 2 minus 2 times 1. So we have 0. So this number 2, when we use the formulation, now 0. So we do the next elements for the next number in row number 3. Okay, for 1, for 1, for 4, and for 2. Put it into this formulation. Okay, so you can calculate that new values here as 9, negative 7, negative 10, and negative 6. So note that when you, we want to uh, calculate it, so the corresponding for this one is here. Okay, for this number is here. Put it into the formulation. For this number is 7, put it into the formulation. For this number 2, correspond to number 4, put in this formulation. Then we get the new value. Okay, so please take note that the row that we want to change, it should be written in front, okay? Why I put, why I say that? Uh, because it is easier for us to identify uh, when, uh, when you do mistakes, okay? So, any row that, that will be changed on the next step, so that row must be written in front in your formulations, okay? So, take note that I have standardized. Even though in the ebook, uh, there will be a different method, okay? But uh, please follow my uh, rules in the class, okay? The reason is we want to see your understanding. Okay, for row number four, this is the created formulation with the same uh, objective. This number, we need to make it zero, okay? So, means that correspond to here. So, this row must be uh, subtract with this row times two. So, this is the created formulation. Then, we do calculate the new value for row number four, okay? So, this is the new calculated value. Okay, so next one. This is the new matrix, correct? Okay, this is the new matrix. Okay, so let's see. This number are already zero. Okay, so in this Gauss elimination, let's look at this is diagonal entries. So there are three numbers that we haven't make it zero, which is nine, five, negative six. Okay, so next, second step. The objective is to make it this zero and this also zero. Okay. So, this one is zero already, then don't touch it. Okay, so the next objective for the second step is to make it this number zero. Okay, so which row we can use? Okay, let's look at. We want to change the number in row number three. Which number? Here. This one is already zero, right? So, then just leave it. Okay, and row number four, this number zero, correct? Okay, so now let's see row number three. Row number 3 is 9, correct? Okay, so let's look at uh, what uh, we need to find out what is the formulation in the ERO. Okay, so we have row number 1 or number 2 to choose. But you have to look at which one is the suitable one. Okay, so uh, we only can choose row number 2 in the formulation, okay, to make it 0, to make it this 9, 0. So we only can choose row number 2. Okay, we cannot choose row number 1. Okay, the reason here, okay, they are number that is non-zero in row number 1. Okay, so if we use row number 1 into the formulation and then combine with row number 3, okay, so this 0, when we do any operation, so this 0 will become non-zero back. Okay, so we want to avoid that kind of situation happens. So, when you do any ERO, please make sure you choose suitable row, okay, in the operation or in the formulation. So that the number that is already zero, okay, cannot be non-zero back, okay. So, please remember. Okay, so next, we only can choose row number two to combine with row number three, okay. So, row number three is nine, row number two is two. Okay, so the row number 2 must be multiplied with some scalar. So the scalar here value is 9 over 2. Okay, now, there is a selection uh, for the scalar value. For this, this we call scalar. 
Okay, this color can be represented in, in two different forms. One is inflection. Okay, second one is in floating numbers. Okay, so when to use floating numbers, when to use fraction. Okay, if in the your original equation does not contain uh, decimal numbers or floating numbers, then use fraction. Okay, but if your original equation contain decimal numbers, then you can use decimal numbers. Okay, for the scalar. So in this case, you see that in our original equation, there is no decimal numbers, right? There's no point form. Decimal numbers means there's no number with decimal places. Okay, so it's just leave it in fraction. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is a scalar value. So the objective here is to make it this 9, 0. So this part must be multiplied by negative 9 over 2. Okay. So we do the operation. Okay, so this 9 becomes 0 after we substitute the number and corresponding entries as here. Okay, now the next number, negative 7 correspond to here, negative 1, put into our created formulation. Negative 7 minus 9 over 2, negative 7, okay, and then use your calculator, then we have negative 5 over 2, then here will be negative 10, okay. So this is 0, so it will be remain the same number. Okay, and then we do similarly, negative 6, put it here, minus 9 over 2 times R2, the corresponding is here, 5. So 9 over 2 times 5, use the calculator, then you will get this number. Okay, so while you're listening this recorded video, please make sure you have your calculator with you to verify the value. Okay, so that's up to row number 3. Now we proceed to row number 4. Okay, row number 4 we look at here. Okay, so in row number 4 is to make it this number 5 become 0. Okay, so we uh, which row we use in the formulation. Okay, so again with the same reason we cannot choose row number 1 because we want to avoid the number 0 to be non zero back. So the only way is to choose row number 2. Okay, so row number 4 is 5, row number 2 is 2, okay? So remember, the row that we want to change must be written in front in your formulation, okay? And then uh, the scalar value will be 5 over 2, then this number 5, when we put it into the formulation, it will become 0, okay? <clears throat> okay, so we have here. Uh, sorry, this one I missed typing. This one is actually zero. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at five minus five over two times two, then we have zero. Okay, this one zero. Let me do the corrections here first. <clears throat> okay, with the same formula, okay, so the next number here, negative 6, put it into the formulation that we have created. So, negative 6 minus 5 over 2 times negative 1, okay. So, again, use your calculator, we get negative 7 over 2, then here will be negative 19, okay, because when we put 0 here, means that negative 19 minus 0, so we get here, and then this one is 1 put into the formulation 1 minus 5 over 2 times the number 5. So we get negative 23 over 2. Okay, so this is the third matrix. Okay, so next one. Our, this number is the last number that we have to make it 0. Okay, which is negative 7 over 2. Okay, so the next objective is to make it negative 7 over 2, 0. Let's look at this is in row number 4. Okay, so row number 4 is the row that we want to change, correct? Row number 4 is the row that we want to change. Okay. So we use row number 3. Okay, in the formulation. We cannot choose row number 2 and row number 1 because we want to avoid that 
the number 0 that is been already 0 cannot become non-zero back. Okay. So, row number 4, we combine with row number 3. Okay. Row number 4. Okay. So, uh, we refer to here. Row number 4, we use this one. Okay. So, what is the scalar? So, the scalar will be 7 over 5. Okay. Okay, so uh, it is, is negative 7 over 5. Uh, when you want to use negative or positive, depends on the sign of the numbers, okay? If your elements in that row is already negative, okay, then just add. But if your element is not negative, then you will have to subtract. So that will be, uh, be 0, okay? So it depends on your elements in that row, positive or negative. Okay, because this sign is negative, this one is also negative, okay? So, they have to be uh, uh, added. So, to be added, so we need to put negative, okay? We have to subtract because negative and negative becomes positive, right? Okay, that's why here will be subtract. Okay, because R3 is negative, R3 is negative. So, negative with negative R3 will be positive. R4 is already negative. So, negative plus, okay. Negative R4, uh, negative number is already negative. We didn't put here as R uh, negative, okay. So, it means that R4 deduct with row number 3 using this formulation, okay. So, calculate. So, this part will be new value. Substitute into the formulation that it becomes zero. So next one we uh, calculate for negative 19 with negative 10. Put the number into the formulation, get your calculator, and you get you will have this value negative 5. Okay, then the last part we have negative 23 over 2 and negative 57 over 2. Put into your formulation and then the Last part that you calculate is this one, right? Okay. So, we have uh, the last matrix, the lower part of the matrix are already zero. So, in the Gauss elimination, we stop at this process. Okay. So, after this, uh, what we should do is using backward substitution. So, remember, this column for P this column for Q, this column for R, and this column for S. So, we use here negative 5 is equal to 1 for 2 over 5. Okay? So, in the backward substitution, okay, so I'm going to change this value. So, you will see. Okay, let you will see that from our last matrix, so I will write down negative 5 s equal to 1 for 2 over 5 okay so this give us s that is equal to Negative uh, 1 for 2 over 25. Uh, so in decimal numbers, it is equal to negative 5.68. Okay, so S is here. Okay, so next one. Okay, we uh, so backward substitution. Now we move. This is we start with row number four. Now we move to row number three. Okay, so the equation in row number 3 is negative uh, 5 over 2 PQR, right? PQR minus 10S uh, is equal to 
is equal to negative 57 over 2. Negative 57. 57 over 2. So, so far, not what we have. Okay, so we find out that our S just now. Over two, uh, minus ten. So S is negative one four two over twenty five. So equal to negative fifty seven over two. Okay, then we get R uh, as thirty four point one two. Okay, this number is in decimal. Okay, in the decimal numbers. Okay, so that is for the second one. Okay, let me do one by one. Number one. This is number two. Okay. Okay, so let's see number three. So our number, sorry, number row number two. Just so just now we have done for row number three. So row number two is here. So we have I write down the equation. Okay, so it's 2Q, 2Q minus R, 2Q minus R is equal to 5, okay? So our calculation just now, 2Q, we already know what is the value of R. So substitute 34.12 is equal to 5. Then we have Q uh, as 19.56. Okay. Okay, so next one we do for the last part, which is from row number, uh, row number one. Okay, so let's look at, at row number one from the last metric that we have, uh, so, so we have P minus, okay, what is the metric? Let's look at, so P minus 4Q P minus 4Q plus uh, 4R plus 7s equal to 4. Okay, so then we have p 
minus we already knew the value for qrs so we just need to substitute q uh, just now is 90.56 R is 34, 34.12. Then S is negative 5.68. So it's equal to 4. So simplify for P. Then we have P as negative 14.12 for it okay Okay, so finally, using Gauss elimination and substitution, uh, backward substitution. Okay, so the solution for P is here. Q is here. R and S. But in the backward substitution, we are supposed to get a uh, solution by S followed by R, then Q and the last one by P. Okay, so how do we, ch how we can check the, uh, your solution is correct or not? Okay, so the value for P, Q, R, S that we have just now, you may substitute into your original equation. So, we may verify and check that the left-hand side after the substitution must be equal to the right-hand side. Okay, so now we see that the solution that we use here using backward substitution, uh, using Gauss elimination with backward substitution, this one we call numerical method. Okay. So uh, basically we call this as a uh, numerical